be educated. And today I wanted to dive into one of the coolest compounds that can be used for fat loss, proper thyroid function, all those things, and it's not going to be T3 or T4, if you've been in the bodybuilding world for a little bit, you know, especially the enhanced one, those are the two main kind of contest prep thyroid drugs that you can take to get really lean. As you know, the thyroid is kind of the main controller of metabolism. So a lot of people leverage these compounds, okay, to kind of use pre-contest, pre-show to help them lose tons of fat. But what if I told you that there is a new drug that is far superior to T3 and T4, and that's what I'll be doing today. Today, guys, let's dive all into GC1 Sobitrome, the thyroid drug of the future. All right, guys, so if you guys understand kind of pharmacology and the goals within pharmacology, you'd understand that the, you know, the target or the goal of a really good drug is to find something that's selective. So if we look at, say, testosterone versus a SARM, the goal of a SARM is to have a compound that's going to be more selective and agonize or kind of right agonize means to activate in a simplistic term um, certain androgen receptors right so SARMs the goal is you want to agonize androgen receptors on the muscle skeletal tissue side of things because they're developed for muscle wasting diseases but you don't want to be agonizing androgen receptors at places uh, like the prostate right or like the scalp or places you know that can cause um, viral uh, viralizing side effects um, in women okay so the goal is to create clean drugs that have very specific targets okay so in the case of thyroid right there's thyroid beta receptors and there's thyroid alpha receptors so gc1 sobitrome is a thyroid beta receptor agonist and if you actually understand the thyroid beta versus the thyroid alpha you'd quickly learn why thyroid beta is a much more favorable target than thyroid alpha so in the next section of this video we'll dive all into why thyroid beta is far superior than thyroid alpha so if you guys have ever taken T3 or even T4, especially at high doses uh, during a contest prep, you've probably noticed a few things, right? You've probably noticed that your heart rate goes up and for some people they become uh, a little bit catabolic, right? So that is because T3 and T4 are not selective, right? They're agonizing the thyroid beta and thyroid alpha. So you're getting kind of the full scope of benefits, but also the full scope of side effects. Now, again, GC1 Sobitrome is going to be a selective agonist of thyroid beta, which thyroid beta is more favorable because it's found primarily on the thyroid, whereas thyroid alpha is found primarily um, in other places. So like the heart, for example, has a lot of thyroid alpha. Now, if you think about this, okay, it's the agonizing of the thyroid alpha that really raises heart rate and that really raises blood pressure. So if you're taking GC1 Sobitrome and you have that selective target for thyroid beta, then you're much more likely to be able to reap the benefits that you would from say T3 or T4 without having to see that dramatic rise in heart rate. Okay. Now, the other thing to be mindful of in this conversation is catabolism. Now, catabolism is a very common issue and a very common side effect with taking T3 and T4. If you overdo it, you can go catabolic, right? These things can rip through uh, muscle tissue at very high dosages. GC1 Sobitrome helps to kind of address this as well because thyroid alpha are much more prevalent in the muscle kind of skeletal tissue, okay? So again, we are, you know, primarily hitting that thyroid beta receptor target, which is going to be very, very selective, very specific for just the thyroid. And with not hitting the thyroid alpha, you're going to be getting much more benefits um, in the sense that you're not going to be getting that raise in heart rate, and you're going to be much less likely to go catabolic. So that's kind of why we want to, you know, strive to hit thyroid beta and not thyroid alpha and why this drug actually performs much better than T3 or say T4. Now in the next part of the video, I will go into my experience using GC1 Sobitrome versus using T3, T4. Now for me, I got my GC1 Sobitrome from Amino Asylum. You can use code biohack uh, to save. Amino Asylum is my go-to source for this, although some of my other sources will be bringing it very soon. Now what I noticed, and I cannot discuss obviously specific dosages, but what I noticed from this is that I got the kind of fat loss benefits in the, um, you know, increase in metabolism that I would get from say T3 or T4. But the biggest thing that I noticed is that my heart rate uh, was kept much, much more in control, right? I didn't get that super high heart rate, that super high kind of blood pressure spike or raise 
um, it felt much, much cleaner and much, much easier on my cardiovascular system, which personally, right, as you guys know, in the bodybuilding space, when we're talking about, you know, having high body weights, when we're talking about using a bunch of stimulants, when we're talking about using, you know, a bunch of drugs and PEDs, the risk of a cardiovascular event like a heart attack goes way up. So if we can, you know, shift from T3, T4 to this GC1 Sobitrome and lower that risk, then in my personal opinion, we can greatly do a huge service to our heart and our cardiovascular kind of health by not just ramming T3 and hitting those thyroid alpha, um, you know, receptors. Okay. So like I said, when I was on it, much less of a raise in heart rate, which for me was huge, right? I'm always trying to keep my heart rate, my blood pressure um, under control. So I really like that. Um, and that was the primary thing. Like I said, it still helped me to lose fat. It still definitely increased my metabolism, but I definitely noticed that it was much, much better. Okay. For my heart. Now, with that being said, guys, the data on this compound is still very limited. So I want you to kind of take this video with a, you know, a bit of a grain of salt because there's still more human data that we need to get kind of the full picture or full scope of it. But in the final portion of this video, let's dive into some of the other benefits of GC1 Sobitrum. All right, so if you know that wasn't enough for you, there's other literature around GC1 Sobitrum that shows that it can be even helpful at improving liver health and certain liver diseases, which I think is super cool. Um, and again, it's been shown to be very effective at kind of promoting a better functioning thyroid without some of the side effects of the standard T3, T4. So guys, that's my video on GC1 Sobitrum. Again, I have not seen a lot of people talk about it, so I really wanted to get this compound kind of out into the mainstream because I think it could be such a valuable tool. Again, if you're looking for this, you can find it over at Amino Asylum. Use code biohack to save, support the channel, with that being said, guys, please comment, like, subscribe, check the description for all my links to things like ebooks, communities, all that good stuff. And until next time, see you guys later.